Hola, Reyes y Reinas. Hi, kings and queens. I pray that today I find you excited um, because we are in the beginning of 2024. But more than anything, I pray that I find you getting more excited to have an activation and a coexistment with the Holy Spirit. Why would we want that? I would tell you because in any area where we are weak, we will have great power. So if I'm finding you today a little deflated, maybe you're frustrated, or maybe you just feel like you're confused about a situation or situations, or situation ships in your life right now it's okay i will tell you that there's good there's good to be recognized when you have these feelings and recognize and remember that these are feelings they're not your identity it's not who you are whatever you're feeling maybe you're feeling like i'm failing in this area of my life i'm failing in all the areas of my life whatever it is or however it is that i find you right now i pray that you get an excitement with your holy spirit right now uh that you get an excitement excitement to receive the holy spirit right now in jesus name let me correct that um and i just pray that we leave each other greater than what we found each other today that we leave each other with a greater activation that we lay everything down right now whatever it is maybe you don't even know how to lay it down but i pray right now in the name of jesus reveal it to us father Reveal to us where it is that we need to lay things down, where we need to let go of things, where we need to walk away from things. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we are in 2024, Father. And I just thank you for us being alive right now, that we have great peace in our hearts. Maybe we don't feel like we do, but we know that we're going to leave today's devotional with a greater peace, with a spirit of prosperity, and with your Holy Spirit protecting us every and anywhere of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, have your way, Lord. Today, we lay everything down, and we thank you for giving us great great comfort if we may be walking right now in a, a season of discomfort we thank you father for giving us hope in things that may seem hopeless we thank you for giving us great faith in things that may seem very fearing to us or fearful to us and we thank you father for giving us great deliverance in this dilemma giving us great great purpose in any pain that we may be experiencing father have our spirits have our minds have our emotions father and have our hearts in jesus name have your way lord right now in jesus mighty name we pray amen and today we're reading from psalm 33 22 which reads may your unfailing love be with us Lord, even as we put our hope in you, mm, may your unfailing love be with us, Lord. So therefore, we can be an unfailing love to others. But we recognize and we know that your unfailing love is a great, the greatest power that we can have. Um, and even as we put our hope in you, Lord, thank you. Just thank you for being with us anywhere and everywhere and any time of the day, Lord. We thank you that you are with us in Jesus' name. And today's title is Spotting Hope. Let me begin. Thank you, Lord. Ocean oceanograph oceanographer Sylvia Earle has been has seen the debt. Bring it, Holy Spirit. Has seen the deter 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 Oh my God. Has seen the deter deteration deteration of coral reefs firsthand. She founded Mission Blue, an organization devoted to the development of global hope spots. These special places around the world are critical to the health of the ocean, which impacts our lives on Earth. Through the intentional care for these areas, scientists have seen the relationships of underwater communities restored and lives of endangered species preserved. In Psalm 33, the psalmist acknowledged that God spoke everything into existence and ensured that all he made would stand firm. As God reigns over generations and nations, he alone restores relationships, saves lives, and revitalizes hope. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for doing all of what you do, Father. However, God invites us to join him in caring for the world and the people he created. <coughs> Excuse me. Each time we praise God for the whisper of a rainbow splashed across a clouded gray sky or the glistening waves of the ocean crashing against a rocky shore, we can proclaim his unfailing love and presence as we put our hope in him. When we're tempted to, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. When we're tempted to toward discouragement or fear as we consider the current state of the world, we may begin to believe we can't make a difference. When do we part as where when we do our part as members of God's care team, however, we can honor him as the creator and help others spot hope as they place their trust in you. 
put their trust in Jesus. Oh, I needed hope in carrying on reading this because I'm reading today from my computer and I'm having a little bit more difficulty in looking at the screen and looking at the computer because when you take your eyes off the screen, uh, research studies or statistics show that you lose, um, you lose your audience. So uh, pray for me in that area because I was almost losing hope here. However, let me carry on to the questions. How has God used nature to affirm your hope in him? God has used nature... Um, seriously like i i seriously like when i am going through things i like to go put myself in environments where i'm reminded of the things that put hope in me of the things that activate in me and sometimes you know yes it's the holy spirit but sometimes i like to go into like the hill country areas or just areas that have a lot of nature where you can hear birds and you don't hear cars uh, like to go into forests, go into jungles, go into things like many of us would like to go get rest and recovery on beaches, right? Because we like to hear the water. There's something about water that does something to our spirits and our souls and it does something to us physically. Um, and I have read and researched and learned that water brings a sense of deliverance. Whether you're crying because you are releasing water, you are getting freed from something. When you go to get rest and recovery on a beach, water does that nature does that god's creations do that for us they give us a form of relaxation why i don't know that's between god and us however what i'm learning is that how does god use it is um, my hope in him I, I will tell you that right now i'm recognizing that um, sometimes you're in an area where you cannot be around nature sometimes nature is just not going to do it for you and what i'm recognizing is that there's always hope because you know that when something has been disappointing or you're doing something that you feel is devaluing like your sense of purpose i'm recognizing that the hope in him is knowing that he has the, the final say so if something is not looking the way that he promised you or something is not looking promising to you or it's just not looking you're not you're not you're not seeking or you're not seeing like something that is sat giving you satisfaction it means that God's not done yet. Whether it is it's something you're praying for, whether it's something you're preparing for, you're practicing for, you're learning for. Um, I would tell you that God can use nature to affirm our hope. But he can also use his word. He can also use his presence. He can use anything because he is the God Almighty. So well, how he's used nature for me has been a lot of times where I would be feeling heartbreak. Or I'd be feeling this like loneliness and when I go into like I go into environments where there's like nature you could just go somewhere to a park you can go somewhere where you just don't see like humans <laughs> you just go into like uh Kerrville was one place that I used to always love to go to I used to take a drive and it would just I would just look around the trees and the birds and I would be like man if the birds don't worry about tomorrow why do I want to be worrying about tomorrow the second question is how can you serve as part of his care team um, I'm recognizing when I care about others needs and I don't focus on my own selfish needs it gives me this reassurance to know that if I in agree I am in agreement with with God um, and the Holy Spirit to be the hands and feet of Jesus um, he will always provide whatever it is that I need or whatever it is that I request he's going to provide it according to his riches and glory but I'm recognizing that if I'm a part of his care team he will always supply my care team and that's not why I do what I do I do it because I want to be more Christ-like so therefore I can be growing in my everyday lives and not just focusing on my needs I can see what the world around me needs and therefore I pray and I want to be a solution for a need of those around me if that makes sense today's prayer is I pray that that blessed you and today's prayer is loving creator and sustainer help us be a hope spotter who faithfully serves on your care team Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for being our creator and our sustainer. And may we be sustainers for others around us and for us to be a hope spotter wherever it is that you are and you see birds or you see the seasons changing, you see the leaves on the tree, whether they're green or you see the leaves falling from the tree. Just know that whatever might be falling from your tree, there's going to come new leaves. There's going to get the season is changing. What season are you in? It's important for you to acknowledge and recognize what season are you in? Are you in a season of leaning out? Are you in a season of sowing? Are you in a season of harvesting? Are you in a season of preparing? Are you in a season, um, if you're leaning out, 
you're leaning out meaning because you're going to gain in the next season so it's important for you to pray and ask guided instruction from the lord you know what am i supposed to do in this season i see the leaves falling is there things falling from my life right now that may be causing me to be feeling cold or lonely the trees the leaves fall they cannot provide shade when the summer comes they have they have their leaves to provide shade so what is it right now that you are feeling maybe you feel like your leaves are falling maybe you feel you know cold in the sense of um not not so much physically but you feel cold in the sense of like you're in a lonely season and you're used to being covered by a lot of people or relationships and right now you don't have one recognize that the seasons are changing take whatever it is that you need to take what knowledge and wisdom you need to take from this season so therefore your next season you will be um ready to take on anything and everything that the lord has for you because i will tell you that if you're sowing and sowing and sowing in the harvest season if you're sowing and sowing in a season where god has called you to be still you're going to be exhausted in the next season and then you're not going to have what you need so if god's calling you to be still in this season it's important that you'll be obedient and you'll be still because there's something he's trying to drop into your into your head your, he's trying to prepare you with knowledge and wisdom and revelation so therefore when you go into the next season you'll be able to be prepared and you'll be fully ener energized because if you're constantly hustling and working and preparing in every season when the time comes for you to receive your harvest because I will tell you what God is showing me right now is that you will attract what God has for you. You don't have to be out there constantly doing things to exhaust yourself because you feel like I have to get this people's attention. I have to do this. I have to do that. There's a time where God calls you to be still because you will attract what you are. You will attract what you're preparing for. You will attract what you're doing. You're calling. There is a table for you. There's people praying for people like you or an opportunity that you have or that your work ethic is going to provide. If you have excellent work ethic, that's great because you don't have to depend on luck. You know that you got it and you're going to fulfill it. But I will tell you that there's seasons where you overexhaust yourself and then when the Lord presents opportunities, you're too tired. You're too drained. Or you're not even prepared mentally because you've been exhausting your body, if that makes sense. So I pray that the Lord gives you great revelation, insight, and clarity. Uh, may he give you provision uh, in Jesus' mighty name. And if you don't have a relationship with God, I pray that you repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for forgiving us of our sins. Thank you for dying on the cross for us. We want uh, we want you to be the Lord over our lives. Thank you for giving us divine guided instruction on how to live. And even when we don't understand, may we study your word so therefore we can be in agreement with you father in the name of jesus thank you for saving us from ourselves and saving us from this world where we know that you are the hope and you are the lord of lords to guide over our lives in jesus mighty name we thank you lord for saving us um i pray that that blessed you i pray that you find a bible-based church and you recognize your king or queen reign responsibly remember that you have great influence over your territory and that you reign responsibly over your territory over your family over your community over that business um maybe over that community so whatever it is that the lord has called you i pray that you take time and um be still if he's called you to be still if he's called you to work then get to it Just start plowing start plowing because harvest season is here for some of us and some of us it's a uh, sowing season for us to sow our seeds and uh, some of us it's just season for us to just be still be still and study his word learn more of the more of god read his word so therefore you'll know what season you're in so in jesus name be blessed reign responsibly learn responsibly be still responsibly sow responsibly and um harvest responsibly so may god bless y'all thank you for your time invested um and thank you for your prayers i am feeling a little bit better however um i just want you to know that god is at work yesterday today and tomorrow so i'm praying for you i'm in agreement with you that um the Lord will have his way in your life and that you want to live for his will. So God bless you. I'll see you all soon. And today I am wearing the Esme Lash. I don't have the box with me, but this is from the Lord and Esme Beauty Holy Lash Collection, which is the Esme I named after me, which I am the founder. What is the Lord and Esme Beauty Holy Lash Collection? It is the first and only lash collection consecrated, dedicated to God, named in honor of women in the Bible. Um, the Esme, which is named after me, I'm the founder. So it's under the founder's collection. And uh, that's me and my daughter, Esme, which Malila. She has her own lash as well. But this is the Esme lash. And in the founder's collection. And the Lord and Esme beauty. Holy lash collection. So God bless y'all. I'll see y'all soon. I believe this one is $12. I'll see y'all soon. And remember, I'm in prayers for you. I'm in agreement with you. May the Holy Spirit shine his face upon you. May God shine his face upon you um, today and every day. And as you enter 2024, I pray that you enter it with an activation of the Holy Spirit. I pray that I leave you greater than where I found you. If this blessed you, please share with someone that you love. God bless y'all. I'll see y'all soon. Bye.